From humble beginnings on the grass at St. Mary's, Villanova Lacrosse began as a labor of love among friends. This group of young men aspired to create a team that could compete wearing the Villanova name and colors. We'd go down to one of the fields here and pass the ball around and just, and then it got to be some other uh, students here saw us and said, oh, I played lacrosse and we started. And the next thing you knew, we had, you know, 12, 15, 20 people had come down and we were all running around. And we started putting together a little pitch and catch and then we started to put together a little bit of uh, little scrimmages. We said, we really ought to start thinking about doing something a little more formal and, and maybe creating a club team. So I went down to see Frank Reagan, who was athletic director at that time and ask him if he would support us as a club team calling ourselves Villanova Lacrosse. He said okay and we were allowed to use cast off shoes, cast off, cast off warm up jackets, anything that said Villanova on it. Once we got it started we found a tremendous number of guys that were extremely interested in playing lacrosse whether it was a varsity sport or a club sport or whatever it didn't matter. One day I saw a sheet on the bulletin board in alumni and said a lacrosse club you know come join our lacrosse club no experience needed I said wow lacrosse you know I wasn't I'd heard of it but I wasn't positive about all the details of the game but I went to a meeting initial meeting and uh, you know I liked the guys that were there they were encouraging we had a guy a coach a guy named Ed Steer who I had played with on the Philadelphia lacrosse club and uh, he coached us. We had one or two games, but the first one was against Lower Marion High School, and we played their senior team, and we won nine to three. That's all I remember about that season. It was a great, it was a great way to start. Everybody uh, was excited about starting this sport at Villanova, and with dreams of maybe someday it could grow into a varsity sport. And there was a, a lot of camaraderie. We had to do everything ourselves. We set up our field back behind the stadium. We had to lay it out ourselves, we built our own goals, we did it all. We did our own scheduling with no significant help from the athletic department because we were a club team. It was just a, a bunch of guys that really uh, enjoyed what they were doing and uh, we all pitched, you know, pitched in together. Nobody had a ton of money. I think uh, Mr. Hartwell donated $500 for startup money for some equipment and the lacrosse organization did some donation on, on equipment and that's kind of how it got started. It was ragtag, couldn't afford a lot of equipment, you know, but we made it work. I know guys in my neighborhood who were in the 1961 team. I, I spent a lot of time talking to them about what it was like in the day. And they tell me great stories about how they petitioned the university and how they went out to, to get a license to be able to play it and how they would sleep in their cars the night before games. That is the, that's the greatest start of anything, just the hard, how, how hard it was to get things going and that you had a group of 15, 25 guys who were self-coaching, self-disciplining themselves to go out and get it done. I mean, when you start something, you don't expect 50 years later for it still to be there, especially as unofficial as we were. But uh, Gene Melcher, who was with me the last two years, he became coach after, after I graduated and went on to graduate school and Melcher helped, Melcher kept things together during those early periods. The teams that we played, I don't think to a school knew we were just a club. I mean, I think they thought it was a varsity sport. We didn't have any money. We paid $10 to join the team. Uh, you supplied pretty much your own equipment and whatnot. And the school provided the facilities. But we played just like we were a varsity team. We played no clubs. We played all varsity uh, teams, and Gene Melcher kept us to NCAA type standards. He wanted the, the image of the Villanova lacrosse player to be the image of Villanova. And back then, you had to wear a tie and jacket everywhere we went on campus, uh, even, even to the library, uh, the cafeteria. Gene's dedication to the Villanova lacrosse team was unbelievable. We had a scouting report on every team we played, and I mean an in-depth scouting report, numbers, tendencies, rides, clears, man up, man down. I had never seen a scouting report in five years of playing lacrosse before I got to Villanova. The hard work of head coaches Ed Steer, Gene Melcher, and Avery Blake Jr. 
paved the way for the 1970s as Villanova lacrosse flourished. Coach Avery Blake retired. Coach Ryan was in law school. And uh, your first year of law school was pretty challenging. He gave it everything he had. And it was amazing how, much, how he could keep up with his schoolwork. Uh, he was a bright guy at having gotten into Villanova University Law School. Uh, so he just had a great impact on my life and all the lives of our, you know, our model of teammates. Occasionally in lacrosse, as you're fast breaking, one too many players goes off sides. If I noticed that, we had a signal. It was either red or black. And that meant if we score a goal, everybody on the team run out on the field. And that way when the refs turn around to count, there was maybe 35 or 40 Villanova players on the field. Even though the other coach might be yelling offsides, offsides, they didn't catch it. So it was the 11 man fast break and it served us well over the years. Players like Bill Hook and Bob Adams headlined the team in the late 1970s. We had some, some of the best players in the country. We had two attackmen that led the nation, one in goals and one in assists. Uh, Bill Hook led the nation with 51 goals and Bob Adams led the nation with 45 assists in 1979. So it was recognition for the program, it was recognition for the university and certainly recognition for those two players. The NCAA really didn't govern college lacrosse. The USILA did the United States Intercollegiate Lacrosse Association. So although uh, Villanova was a, was a club sport on campus, uh, nationally, uh, we were in the same same pot as everybody else. Moving from, from 1980 to 81 when we went from a club program to a varsity program. Villanova lacrosse moved leaps and bounds during the 1980s under legendary coaches Lee Stevens and Randy Marks. And the Wildcats began to make headlines on the national lacrosse scene. Now, these guys love the game, love their team, and they put the time in as a result. And, uh, you know, Randy worked tirelessly at this program and I think the reason they're at the level they're at now is the effort that Randy put in for all those years. An impressive 11 and 1 record during the 1984 season marked the best in Villanova history. We were on nobody's radar. That was the first year we were ranked and when we stepped on the field nobody expected what they were going to get and it was just a whooping week in and week out. That was the coolest part where they were just in shock and before they knew what was happening they were they lost. Growing up, you'd, you'd see North Carolina. I had North Carolina posters on my wall, and I had Hopkins posters on my wall. And it was great until the whistle blew. You learn the lesson, and you say, guess, guess what? You're never going to get better until you play those good teams. It was humbling in the beginning. I mean, we, we, we had a tough time competing. But by playing those guys, we were able to get um, better competition. We were able to get better uh, schedules every year and better recruits which ultimately made the program what it is right now. We started having some success playing some of the big teams and then in fact you know beating Duke when they were number eight, beating Hofstra when they were number eight in the country and these were scholarship teams and we were non-scholarship teams and you know every year it seemed like our recruits got better uh, you know John McAvoy and Chris Sullivan and Jim Rogers and these guys and you know towards the end of my tenure here it was you know you'd have five six guys that came in that could play anywhere and uh, you know by the time I graduated we had gone from a program that no one had ever heard of to be a nationally ranked. Moving into the current era of Villanova lacrosse, the team took perhaps one of the biggest steps in program history by joining the Colonial Athletic Association in 2002. Brian Marks and John Urbana would join the list of Villanova All-Americans and the Wildcats would prove themselves a powerhouse in the CAA and national rankings. I think Randy Marks for me is Villanova lacrosse. Uh, he has been the head coach 24 of the 50 years here. He is the, you know, he's the man most responsible for building it from where it was when he took over in the early 80s to where it was when he left in, in 2006. In 2006, Mike Corrado took the reins of the program and propelled the team to the next level. The team earned its first ever NCAA tournament berth in 2009. The following season, the team joined the Big East Conference. The future of this program is, is limitless. You know, where we are right now and in, in going into the Big East Conference, I think, has, uh, has helped the program take the next step to where we've been able to be a pretty consistent top 20 team the last few years, where I think we are on the verge of, of now going into that top 10 realm. The future of Villanova lacrosse is bright under Coach Corrado and his staff of Villanova alumni as the Wildcats continue to build on the passion of that 1961 team.